Hey, welcome everybody to the Seven Figures Club podcast. On today's show, boys and girls, we've got an amazing guest for you. We've got Mr. John Sanders, and John is an entrepreneur who actually helps other entrepreneurs and business owners. In uh, he's he's worked in SBA for a decade. He's also an expert in investment property and acquisitions and real estate and uh you know commercial mortgages kind of some of those uh, bigger type deals he's also well connected into professional sports and has a lot of connections in the nfl he did also happen to pit play with you know a quarterback you might have heard of drew Brees, and he does live in that louisiana area john welcome to the show we're excited to have you on there are over 32 million businesses in the U.S., and over 90% of them will never break seven figures in annual sales. So how do we as entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs break into that seven figures club? This podcast will relentlessly share the secrets, strategies, and tactics I've used to create three multi-seven figures businesses and bring in even more successful entrepreneurs than me to share their inspirational stories and tactics to success. You can create your dream business in life right now. So buckle up and let's go. I appreciate it, Leo. I'm excited to, uh, you had me on here. Absolutely. So, so John, tell us a little bit uh, about uh, your background. How did you go from you know football star into the world of finance? And what was that transition like? And, and what led you down that uh, road? Well, one of the biggest things, uh, Leo, was that I played football for 20 years. And people say, what that mean? From, from age five to age 23. So that's all I knew was wake up in the morning, uh, go eat like a horse, then go lift a bunch of weight that probably break somebody's back, six, 700 pounds, squatting and stuff like that. Dang man, what, what were you squatting back then? Uh, 650, 700. Guys, that is crazy. That's oh, unbelievable. you 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 would um it, it uh, you know uh, Leo, have you ever heard of an extra large pizza? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I don't think you can see those anymore. It's like an extra large. We would devour an extra large pizza like it was nothing. It was just like because you you were just trying to keep on so many calories and stuff like that just to just to maintain weight. And so went through went through the whole process. Tried to go to NFL. I mean, but I come from a background of, of teachers. So they said, well, if you're going to college, you better have a plan B. It's not, well, you know, and my, co my, my coach, who still is coaching right now, he actually was in the Super Bowl with the, uh, the San Francisco 49ers. His name was uh, Bobby Turner. His name Bobby Turner. He's like Bobby the Turner, got it. Player. And Bobby, uh, 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 Coach T, we call him Coach T. Coach T told us only one point, at the time, only 1.5% of the people who go to college actually make it to the pros. So, you know, I said, well, you know what, that's right. I, I need to go ahead and um, and get something else going on. So I went to the Air Force RTC and and did the football uh, thing. I was going to I was going to be a um, an A-10 pilot. I don't know if you're familiar with A-10 pilots. Those are the big uh, warthogs. They call them the tanks in the sky. They actually yeah. shoot up. They actually shoot up uh, tanks. And so I went I went through that. And so, so ROTC or military? How, how did that military, work? Out? Air Force. Air gotcha. Force RTC. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was going to pilot training the whole nine yards. And as as in anything, all it takes is one injury, one injury and your football dreams are over. And I tore my ACL. In fact, that's a that's the one of the most roughest uh, injuries you can have on your knees because it pretty much keep you your knee from wobbling. And I tore that and never could get it back. And I said, you know what? I'm here. Oh, wow. And I need to figure out something. So I, I, I graduated in, in medical, techno medical technology. I was pre-med. My parents died. Uh, my mom and dad died when I was 21 and um, 23. So I said, you know what? I like helping people, but I really don't think medicine is the way I want to go. So some friends of mine was telling me about financing. I had guys who I went to high school with. They were not the brightest people, but they were really up there. And I was like, how are you over banks? And how are you over these things? And he said, well, the, the person who really runs things are the people who control the assets. And I don't know about you and Leo and your kitchen table. That wasn't that, that wasn't a conversation I had in my kitchen table. Like when I was growing up kitchen table was, Hey, I'll, um, I can go and, you know, get an education, go play football, um, become a teacher, come, Parents, teachers, maybe contractor, maybe, but 
it wasn't until my grandfather died and he had a sixth grade education and I said, hold up, you have a higher net worth than all of our grandkids combined and you only have a sixth grade education and we got master's degrees and stuff like that. So I got really intrigued about that and I said, how can I, how can I get in that atmosphere? And a friend of mine introduced me to some companies that allowed me to, you know, to get in, get into financing. And I started out with buying uh, real estate notes, like owner finance notes, and then transferring them over to to companies that like banks that bought those notes. But then people were coming to me and say, "Hey, I can't refinance. I can't do this. Can you help me with this?" No. So I got into that, and someone taught me that. But the, the, the moral story is I got around a network of people who can help me and try to get me to that point. And they were really, really educated about something I was not really, really educated about. Remember, from my kitchen table, we didn't talk about mutual funds and IRAs. We talked about paying the bills and um, just getting over or, or just be, just getting ahead, maybe, and then going to school and getting a PhD and all that. Yeah, no, man. I, I hear you. That's kind of how it was growing up for me, oldest of nine kids in a small town in southern Utah called Beaver. And it was all about, oh. you know, and, and my parents both went to college and got degrees. But you don't learn these things in college. You don't learn about money. And, and that's it's just so powerful what you just said. Hey, my grandpa who had the sixth grade education, he's the one who's actually succeeded the most financially. Hey, and, it's, the deal. <laughs> and and so it's it's fine. How important it is for people, for you to find a mentor, somebody who ha understands money, understands investments and, and learn from them. And why isn't that taught in school? You know, I ask that question all the time. I mean, because I mean, as a as a volunteer, I still um, help some kids, you know, math and stuff, math wise. Now, I could do calculus, I could do algebra, which I'm pretty good at. I'm shocked me. I, I, but what I what I had to realize in those different things, Leo, is in algebra and calculus, they're all a language. It's the language of math. Most people don't get. So I was not taught that language of finances. We were taught to be, I was at a college, prep, college preparatory school for boys. They all, we, we, hey, you were, your track was you're going to leave here, you're going to get a good job, and you're going to become a statistic of, of the good graduates of St. Paul School. And that's, that's the whole thing. You're one of the alumni of the, of the Golden Marching Wolves. So that was it. Other than that, I had no clue about the actual finance aspect of because they're not taught those different things because most of the times colleges are actually run by corporations. Mm. The corporations, if you look at a college, when you go to that college, the college says, hey, we have alliances with Ford, with Eli Lilly, with uh, Allied, with all these different corporations, which gives them money to do what? Get a workforce. But as you and I know, the economy doesn't pay the workforce. It pays the connectors, people who connect um, things, connect people to resources. So I had to learn that outside of school because school did not teach us the basic thing. They teach us how to get a good job. I'm not against college. Trust me. Love it. Uh, sometimes I want to go back, <laughs> but unfortunately, I'm way gone from that. No, but, you know, the big thing is to learn. It, there's learning the basics on how to let's, let's talk about how to handle a checkbook, how For to sure. uh, understand credit. I mean, they got me bad when I was in college. You know, you know, the, the credit card dealers were there when you go out there. They got get this credit card, dude. Credit they're card. handing them out like crack cocaine. Oh get get yourself some cards, kids. Oh man, you and know, these look, kids don't know what they're doing. Oh my god, you have a I got a three liter. I mean, I don't think they even do three liters anymore. I'm trying to date myself, but. It was like, hey, get this three later today, and you sign this application. I had all types of cars. They, they had a girl, I'll never forget this, in my speech, in a speech class or, or, or a public speaking class. Her speech was on her credit card. And you know when they had the credit card wallet and it just rolls out? And she just <laughs> yeah. rolled a quarter it out. And we're like, oh man, she's balling. She got all these credit cards. And she was in for hell, but she didn't even know it. And neither did I. I thought it was the coolest thing ever, but until somebody told me how credit worked, like the rule of 72 and how uh, money doubles. I didn't know that. Those, that's like Greek to me until 
I was able to sit down with somebody who get who got a chance to sit down with me and take it slow and tell me exactly what this means in basic terminology. Like the Bible, it doesn't speak in, you know, highly theoretic. Jesus was not highly theoretic. He was very, very simple. He, he used agrarian technology, I mean, <laughs> agrarian terminology. That's what he used. And this guy spoke to me in, in an in agrarian, common sense technology. So then I had the aha moment. So they're not taught, Leo, to, or they're not paid to teach us the basics of how finances work. And that, I think, is the atrocity of not having a mentor. But when you have a mentor that can, that, okay, you, like, I, I used to hear this, I used to hear the, the, uh, the saying, oh, you got to go through some things. No, you don't. I'm going to let your mentor go through it. I'm going to learn from him. I'm like, okay, if you went through crap, Leo, I'm like, you told you your story about, you know, your kid, you didn't have this. So yep. me, I'm listening what, what, what happened with you. So I'm thinking in my back, my, back of my mind, that's some lucky kids because basically they're going to be able to see all you went through. They're going to be able to step through the situations. They're going to be able to learn what dad went through and they're going to be a little better off for it. That's what having a mentor is. You don't have to go through the pitfalls they did. That's why you learning from them. So you don't have to go through the headaches. Hey, man. Well, well said, uh, John. So, John, with Omni Universal Capital, like you've been an SBA expert and a government loan expert. And I think in the last two years, there's never been more confusion and misinformation about some of the government loan programs out there for business owners and and what reality is. So share, if you would, just just what is reality? What are the options and 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 how can Omni Universal kind of bridge that gap because there's a lot of confusion out there. Well, the biggest thing, uh, uh, Leo, I used to, uh, they used to bring me in to talk to uh, a lot of the 8A contractors and stuff with the programs that are out there and that are not regular finance. Because, I mean, you think about a uh, government contract. Who was the biggest buyer around? The federal government. They buy Absolutely. everything. Toilet paper to to air grown air uh, aim missiles, you know, air, I mean, ground to air missiles, ram missiles, uh, scuds. Uh, they buy toilet, they, they buy plungers, they buy um, toilet paper, they buy gas. One of my clients uh, had to get financing to to haul 45 million gallons of gas for the Air Force through a pipeline. Wow, and unbelievable! So, oh, yeah, it, it, it gets crazy. But there's also the lingo that you need to understand how to talk to people. And that's where I, I, I thrive on is making things very, very complicated, very, very simple. I mean, Richard Branson said this. It takes any, any dodo can make anything complicated, but it takes a genius to make it simple. And I'm, well saying I'm, the, I'm the most um, I'm the big genius, but I'm smart enough to run it, realize that there's more common sense and common folk than they are these brainiacs out here. So if you can get them on the same page and understand what's going on, they not only become good clients, they also become good advertising pieces. I used to make this joke, I mean, when I was doing investments, um, most of your financial services companies or your big companies like your Merrill Lynch's, this is not throwing any daggers, this is just straight truth. Facts, they're not baby. looking to talk, yeah, you're not, they're not looking to talk to you if you have, $200,000. No, a matter of fact, Merrill Lynch does not even get paid any commission on anything you get if it's under $200,000. And this is, this is a, I got this from a broker, guys I know, a network. And they said, well, crap, most of America, 79%, 94% of the country really do not have $200,000 of disposable income to just hear, you know? And let's invest for you. So what's in it for them? They're not looking to help you. That's where uh, making it simple for you, that's what I do. I make it simple for people. And I, and I see that's where uh, seven figures do the same thing. I mean, I've, I've been looking through the criteria. 
And, I, and Leo, I've just seen some complicated crap. I'm just, I'm just be honest with you. I have, and it, I, nothing complicated about your program at all. I, I, I can actually uh, co-sign on that one. I mean, it's easy to understand, and it's easier to, to, to get along. And if you just invest the time, so you need somebody to walk with you so you can invest the time. Because most people are scared out there. They're scared because I say I'm trying to give you a contract with the federal government. The federal government gives you a multi-million dollar contract. And this is the truth. I have seen this happen, Leo. Um, okay. People have had a million to two million dollar contracts awarded to them, but they did not have the finances to complete it. And sometimes the government will put you on a 30 day net, which means they, they you, you, you do the contract and they, they pay you 30 days later. That's what 30 day net mean for those who don't know. Uh, 45 day net. Or sometimes. So, so if I'm the business owner, then I got to front everything and and I better have some money that or that million dollar contract's going to go up in smoke. Is that right? No, you're going to be blacklisted. Oh, it's even worse. That's even worse. You're going to be blacklisted and they're going to say, you suck. You cannot complete our job. You can't do what you said you can do. We're going to go give it to Halle Burton, which is most of the time the same thing. Or if you have a big company that wants you to. Um, sub for them or be a what's called a not a prime prime is the one who has the direct contract with the federal government but a sub you can't even be a sub because the the main guy has to know that you have the capability to do those different things to have to to be able to do that section of the contract that we have so if you can't do that now you're blacklisted to even the primes so that's why you got to have a good source of income a good source of financing to do you that upfront money so you can do those different things we're talking about a lot of different areas we're talking about trucking we t most of the time when they say contract they think of contractor building a house no we're talking about supply chain we're talking about building a uh, uh, building one we're talking about road work you know i don't know if anybody who's been on the road i have a client who they do the waving you know the big loads on the truck but you know yeah the federal government is saying nasa that has the big covered vehicles but you don't know what is under right. that thing with the, something like what, uh spy tech or whatever they got there's guys who drive for them and they have to have the financing and stuff for that too so, so what there's a lot of government funding programs and having, you know, help thousands of people with these government funding programs, what are kind of the pros and cons of government funding programs versus, you know, creative financing or some of the just private stuff that's out there that's not government? And what if what should people know about that, do you think? Well, Leo, you know, like, uh, this is the funniest thing. You and I know this. because I, 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 I heard it in the conversation. The banks are not giving money to people like you and me on no maybe you now, maybe because oh. you know you, you, you miss the <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but I'm talking about the prior you. <laughs> they're not just giving <laughs> yeah, they're not just giving money to people on everyday basis. They are giving money to the people who don't need it. That's the most they're giving. Yeah, so we, Hall Halliburton and those big multi-billion yeah, yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll Cheney give you money, pretty, but if you're small, Dick, it's it's way tough. Yeah, yeah, Dick Cheney's pretty well off. I think he's yeah. he, he's, 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 he's okay. He's, he's okay. But when you're talking about me, who are a guy who has a truck, and he wants to get out of being a lease truck guy, where he's paying phenomenal fees to lease that truck and want to own his own rig so he can drive for them. Well, there are no programs for him to cross that gap. They are only thing they can get is what it's called, like you said, an SBA loan. And then you have to have, which I thought was, was uh, I'm going I'm to come back on that, was the best comeback in the world. I'm going to patent that if you don't patent it before me. <laughs> you said, oh, do you have two years of financials? Uh, can you get this loan? No. Well, they're quick to say no than to say yes. And those there's no government program unless you have a special grant or you have a special uh, years and years and years of experience or you're locked in with a heavy hitter. They're not going to give you that money. It's pretty much non-existent. 
So there has to be other alternatives for clientele. And that's where other funding sources like your like your faculty sources, like uh, small small lenders, or like like in your program, we have you have 24 to 48 months. Oh, well, we, most people come with the mentality like they're trained. They're trained by the banks to think longevity and loan, but they don't really understand the cost of not doing it. I mean, we used to have an example. Okay, well, you take a loan for 20%. And they said, oh, no, but not only no, hell no, I'm not going to take a 20% loan. Okay. <laughs> so I said, okay, great. Would you jump out of an airplane? Uh, no, that's crazy. I'm not going to jump out of an airplane. But what if it's on the ground? Would you jump out of an airplane then? If it's on the ground part, would you jump out of an airplane? Yeah, it's, why? Because it's on the ground. See, you don't, you don't, they don't really understand what they're losing out on. It's not about, it's about the price of losing out on the opportunity. That is what it's about, the price of losing out on the opportunity. So if I can get you, if you, and, and then in some cases on that 10 to 15 percent loan or 20 percent loan, their actual cost is less than what it would be on that four to five percent. Or they say, well, I get two and three percent. Well, no, they're not going to get that to you. Your, your credit is kind of jacked up right now, buddy. So therefore, they're not going to give you that. So when they promote it on TV or like we give loans, now they have to say as low as. They can't say we give 2% loan. They have to say by law as low as. So, you know, to be correct or they can be sued now. But now, so you're saying as low as, but that does not mean you're going to get two, three, four, five percent 5% loans. That means, you know, so... Now you're stuck. You you can't move, and the worst thing is to be is stuck in business. And if you, you you're hemorrhaging cash, you're dying. You know you're looking for air in the Mojave Desert. <laughs> you know <laughs> you know water. You know it's it's it, it's it's a pretty bad situation. No of no question. And, and the funny thing is, John, I think a lot of people look at it like, hey you know what, this is just like my mortgage, just like my car. Well, no, right. it's not because no. your mortgage is backed up by your house. Your car is backed up by a car. If you don't make those payments, lenders can take that back. But when you're talking about getting no collateral financing to fund a business, which is That's traditionally right. way more risky than a consumer, That's then right. there, there's higher risk there. And so if you are charged 20% interest, well, again, it's yeah. not my mortgage. My mortgage, yeah. unless it's a rental property, doesn't make me money. But if I get $100,000 at a 20% interest rate and I can turn that into $300,000 of sales for my new business in the next 12 months, well, now it makes sense to take that money out because I'm going to win. It's not like your mortgage and your car loan. No, it's not. And then if you look at it, okay, if because you know, there's many ways you can you can do uh, more. I mean, you can raise capital. You can do PPPs. You can do uh, uh, PPMs. I'm sorry, I'm stuck on the PP. I just got finished with the yeah the no thing, the PPP program. But anyway, let, yeah. let me break that down for our audience real quick because you're dropping some really important terms. So we've all heard of that PPP loan, right? The 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 payroll loan that the government's doing, which it, right. it expired, right, John? It doesn't it exist not. anymore. Perfect. Ain't nobody yeah. getting it anymore. But, yeah. but John just uh, dropped a value bomb for us. You guys can run a private placement mem memorandum or a PPM and actually yeah. raise yeah. capital from investors and accredited yeah. investors yeah. and uh, do, do that. Yeah, that's one of the big things that I've been doing for years. I mean, I got my own fund as well. Uh, but you have a, it's called a private placement memorandum. And let's just use this. They call it friends and family, but real friends and family, not just not the one that you owe fifty dollars to, but people that you put together a plan. Which is the biggest problem is we don't put together a business plan to show someone to pitch to someone. So like, if Leo, you 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 know you you, you you're doing well. So if I come to you, Leo, I say, Leo, I have this project, I have this program, and I want to uh, invest into a hemp farm. Everybody knows it's growing. You can make hemp and boards right here. I know you have the capital. Would you be one of the guys who helped me fund my registration stuff? And I'll pay you back X, Y, Z amount. And he come to me and he's like, John, I remember you in college. You were bumming two or three dollars from me back in college. 
uh, no, <laughs> you know, because I don't have a plan to present to you. You can't see the end. Like, like what uh, Covey said, Stephen Covey said, you start with the end in mind. Well, you don't have any end in mind. Amen. So how can I invest my money with you? It's being responsible. Just like when we're in um, high school or grade school, you had a report card where your report card is your credit report. <laughs> That's your report card right now. And so, you know, ha having that, having those readily er areas available for you, you can keep, keep it moving. Or you have what's called a capital stack. That capital stack could be the PPM. It could be financing like you guys already do. It could be the, the full-fledged SBA loan. Well, sometimes you have gaps. That you have that you have to have those gaps can be met by those things by alternative financing so you can go on to a multi-million dollar project but you know just starting small you you gotta you, you gotta have financial backing you cannot it, it does not work with uh and, and it's and it's sad to say it's kind of messed up the way it is that the, the the small guy does not have the opportunity they have to get you have to be around people. And just like I said earlier, either you're going to network or you're going to look for work. So you've got to be around a network of people, around a lot of funders that can help you get past that hurdle. No question. And that's what we call the funding formula. And, and guys like Kevin Plank right. of Under Armour and Phil Knight of Nike and even Google have used this formula. And you've harnessed it yourself. So, John, for the audience that's listening that are interested in government funding and, and creative financing to kind of make things happen, how can they connect with Omni Universal Capital and your team? Well, they can go to OmniUniversal.com. I mean, you can go through. I have the links on there for um, Omni Universal. It's OmniUniversal.com. They can go there. It has, a, um, it has a stock ticker on it, and they can you know, hit contact. Or they can uh, they can catch me. Uh, I'll give them my email, personal email. Uh, they can go to admin at omniuniversal capital omniuniversal capital com. So either omniuniversal com or they can go to admin at um, uh, at omniuniversal capital com. Or I'll give them the direct number, area code 985 590 four six nine five nine eight five. Five nine zero four six nine five. You can contact me directly, leave a message, or contact me in, in any aspect. I we have the we have the the capabilities to put people where they need to be in government contracting and in business financing. I mean, some of the things that I see, Leo, is one, you don't have your most people don't have their taxes and stuff together. They don't. Two they don't have access to business credit. I mean, I've been doing business credit for 20 years from clients and it's, it's been, it's been like, a, uh, it's, it's like going into a, 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 an Egyptian, um, an Egyptian um, pyramid and looking at hieroglyphics. You're like, what the, what is that? Because there's two separate, uh, it's two separate uh, taxing. There's your, you got your paydex score and you got your FICO. Well, FICO is not going to give you their formula on how it works. So everybody's going to give you different things. Just keep, you know, and so we're, they're, they're taught bad habits, bad credit habits. I, I, I admit, like I was, like I said, like a, like a, like I'm in church as a, Hey, I recognize that I had bad habits too. Those bad spending habits. Your credit cards are not your consumer cards. They are your investment cards. They help you get well said. bigger well said. and better things. So, I'm going to invest my credit and my money in the things that's going to help me to make more money. Like you said, well, some people like may be on the fence and I'm going to do a plug for you because most people be on the fence and they say, well, I need help. I need this, but I don't want to spend the money to put into it. So even if it costs 3000, 4000, I mean, for me as a business consultant, some people get me for three or $4,000 just to, to uh, retain. Or uh, you go to an attorney if you want to keep yourself out of trouble. The retainer is fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. Well, you're forced to do that. But what about something for your life? If you got fifteen, okay. Most people had what just what just happened. I know in Louisiana, 
And in Texas and Oklahoma, we're still going through the tax season. Tax season is over on the 17th of June. So some people are getting refunds and stuff like that. I mean, sizable refunds. Some people got the stimulus payments that are sizable. So instead of, and I know times are hard. I'm not going to sit there and say, well, you know, you can do that. No, let's be real. There's something you can invest in, even be a book or something. So that money that you have just sitting there, don't go on a trip. Don't go, because you, you, you know, okay, you're going to be in more debt. Invest it into a program that's somebody that's going to help you. If it costs $1,500, it's a write-off on your taxes. Go ahead and do it. It's worth it. Because now you're you get, not only, like just say, for instance, I'm, I, I looked in your program because it's something I can add to my repertoire. So I figure like this, I wouldn't put the money up. And guess what happened? I gained a friend. <laughs> His name is Leo. He's the CEO of Seven Figures Academy. Hmm. That's called a network. Now I have a bigger network of people that I can talk to. Now, whomever you're, whomever you're around, whoever you're talking to, you're only the sum total of your friends. If your friends suck, so do you. <laughs> Is that 100%. Bad? 100%. Oh you are God. the sum total of the people you hang out with the most. And your net worth is your net work. You're absolutely right. And John, you're making a great point. And guess what? The best investor of all time, Warren Buffett, says the best yeah. investment you can make is in yourself because it pays the highest interest. And yes. so instead of buying crap that we don't need and investing in stuff that doesn't move the needle, doesn't make our lives better in a meaningful way, guys, let's invest in education. Let's invest in relationships with great people like John who are there to help you as a business owner. And not only does John have expertise in government contracts and financing, but he's also an expert in energy and fuel because he's located in Louisiana, which is one of those important hubs and, and does a lot with uh, oil and gas and diesel and a lot of those types of businesses. So if you guys are in those businesses, you're going to want to check out OmniUniversal.com. Absolutely. Absolutely. And guys, you want to check out Seven Figures, I'm telling you. Uh, I, don't, I don't plug for really anybody that much. <laughs> I really don't, uh, unless you pretty much know, got your stuff together. They they got their stuff together at seven figures. I mean, I I I've looked at the whole thing. I mean, I, I looked at what they're doing, and if you're looking for if you're just starting out and you're looking for something that's just that's going to help you completely, this that that these are good people. I mean, be honest with you. I've looked at I've seen people who who have done similar programs, and I've been in business a while, and they confuse me. And if you confuse me, God, dog, you got it. That, that's kind of hard. I mean, because I'm, I'm very understanding. And this opportunity, you know, they, they hit you right between the eyes. It's, it's not, you know, you, you can't get somebody, you can't get around somebody who's going to play around with you. These are guys who they're serious about what they're doing. They want, they want you to succeed because when you succeed, they succeed because more people come aboard. And it's a no no nonsense program. So for you who who you know, hey, I looked at it for myself, uh, and hey, well, why why not? Why not take the opportunity to grow you and your business and your family's lifestyle and get people who can help you instead of people who can hurt you? Because I used to know when I first started in finance. I'm gonna be honest with you. I had to find vendors. I had to find people to give me a shot. I had to find people to give me a chance. Please let me be one of your vendors that get other people. Well, who are you and what school you went to? And uh, what did you No, It's none of that. I mean, for the people I saw in this program, I was like, yeah. And that was the coolest thing. I'll be honest with you the other day with that gentleman who won, the, who, who won the Mac and the Mac won the Mac. And he said, hey, if I win this Mac, it'll let me in. I'll give it back to you. And I'm talking, but that's just a testament of how God works, because when you put it in the atmosphere, God will, you know, God will make way for you. You know, he's a no excuse God and he'll make things happen for you for those who believe in him and for those who 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 seek for goodness. I mean, the guy was seeking for goodness and you will have a good opportunity. So, hey, it just was a good merger in heaven. <laughs> you know, powerful words. Amen to that. Uh, John, I appreciate you sharing that. And, and what a great story it was for that guy. And 
how things come together. And that's what happens. Sometimes you do all your part as much as you can, and then God will do the rest, but we have to do our part. And that's, that's the biggest uh, challenge. Absolutely. 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 So well, I'll, guys, I'll, that, 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 that's an awesome thing, man, that, that, that y'all, you guys are doing and keep up the good work, Leo. And um, definitely because service is needed. An entrepreneur is one thing and one thing only. It's one, and I, I tell this to my business clients, it's the funniest thing ever. And they're like, hey guys, what is an entrepreneur? And you know, like, you know, when we grew up in high school, we have to give the most educated answer. It is one who um, has a business and grows um, networks of people and he goes to banks and he makes a lot of money. Okay, what is it? Oh, well, he does, and she uh, has a big building and they went to go to college and all that. I said, no. And they said, what is an entrepreneur then? An entrepreneur is a person who solves a problem and gets a fee. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing else, Leo. Amen. You solve solve the problem of people not having funding, so you should get your fee and not have a problem with it. Okay. I made, I I save people from losing their homes. I save people from going out of business. I have people get government financing. I should get a fee for that, shouldn't I, Leo? You help people get into business. You help people get started in finance. You help people find loan sources. You help them educate their minds. So you should get a fee for that too. So it's only, it's, it's only you pay a man or a woman their due wages. And that's what it's about. You earn every dollar you make over there. And, uh, you know, pay these people there. You you want to get involved with that. Anybody that can help you grow your life. This is the information age. It's not the it's not the uh, it's, it's not the industrial age anymore. This is an information age. information costs. So it's worth the cost and in, in buying the information. I've spent thousands of dollars in one year just just in different programs and people who can. Uh, may may have areas that I can't do things in that I might have missed a ha ha moment. Like I, I told Leo the other day, I said, man, just the fact of how you do your scheduling, man, I got to get on that. That's that's a good deal there. So hey, you, this is my this is my situation. Hey, pick this time, pick this time, I'm available. Well, that kind of gives me a freed up life because you can be like running with a chicken with your head cut off. But when because the need in finance and the need to help people is so great. I mean, this opportunity is just unprecedented, what, what you're doing and what we're doing for clientele because that really nobody knows where the money is. And we're supplying people with the opportunity to better their life. Just like they're saying, equity is not something that comes cheap. But if, when you learn through the right people, it's not as expensive. Well said. Well said, John. Well, guys, go to OmniUniversal.com, work with John, put an expert on your team, and good things will happen. And we'll see you on the flip side of the next Seven Figures Club episode. Are you looking for more Seven Figure Secrets content or even how you can launch your own recession-proof business? Then check out sevenfigures.com. That's the digit seven, F-I-G-U-R-E-S.com, where we share more videos, stories, strategies, funding solutions, entrepreneurial education, and even the secret business type that's recession-proof. Thank you for listening, and if you're finding value in our podcast, please give us a five-star and invite others to join the club.